this video is supported by an educational grant from Healthmark. Hi, I'm Abby Smart. I'm an epidemiologist and research associate at Ofsted & Associates, a company that specializes in conducting real-world research to support improvements in patient safety and occupational health. And I'm here today to talk about tools used for visual inspection of endoscopes. Endoscope processing standards and guidelines all recommend that endoscopes be visually inspected with lighted magnification to improve processing effectiveness and prevent damaged and dirty scopes from being used on patients. Today, I'm going to be talking about the kinds of tools that are available to help you do this and share some tips about methods for performing visual inspection. Lighted magnification systems are designed to provide a better view of endoscope components to allow you to see tiny defects. Types of systems include tabletop or wall-mounted systems, handheld magnifying glasses, microscopes, and boroscopes that provide lighting and magnification for inspecting the insides of channels and ports. This slide shows a countertop mounted magnification system with built-in LED lights. A big advantage to these systems is that your hands are free to move the scope around while you're looking through the lens. And they also let you see bigger areas of the scope at the same time while lighting up your field of vision. The enclosed design allows it to be easily cleaned and disinfected. Now let's take a closer look at a handheld magnifying glass. This one has different levels of magnification, with the larger rectangular lens offering three times magnification and the smaller round lens offering 10 times. It also has built-in LED lights to help you see, and it's really easy to clean and disinfect. You can see here that simple magnifying glasses like these can be really helpful for inspecting distal ends and other tiny components. Here's an example of an eye loop that can be attached to a phone or tablet to provide magnification and allow you to take photos of any defects that you find. The one downside to these is that you have to figure out how to clean and disinfect the eye loop and the tablet or phone. One of our biggest challenges when photographing defects is finding a way to stabilize the camera and hold it really still while taking a shot. It can help to brace your arm on a nearby surface or get help from a coworker. A few years ago, we started using microscopes for visual inspection because they provide a super high level of magnification, up to 230 times, and a digital microscope like this hooks up to a computer monitor so we can see things on a bigger screen. It comes with built-in LED lights and a stand that moves up and down and allows hands-free imaging. This is great because it holds the microscope really still so that you can get good photos with high magnification. If you want, you can also hold this type of microscope in your hands, but the stand is really helpful. Boroscopes are basically endoscopes that are small enough to fit inside other endoscopes so that you can inspect their ports and channels. They have an insertion tube or shaft that's similar to the insertion tube of other scopes and a control handle that lets you control brightness. And they can be hooked up to a monitor and software for taking photos and videos. When you're selecting a boroscope, keep in mind that the image quality is going to be a lot better with a boroscope that's the right size for the channel that you're inspecting. This image shows the average diameters for instrument channels in several types of endoscopes. And you can see that GI scope channels are a lot bigger than instrument channels of bronchoscopes, cystoscopes, and ureteroscopes. You might need to get two different sizes of boroscopes because one that fits nicely in, the, in a big channel of a GI scope is gonna be way too big to fit inside a tiny scope like a ureteroscope. And a tiny boroscope won't provide a good image if you use it inside a bigger channel. It's kind of like using a tiny little flashlight to see inside a huge auditorium. You won't see much and you need a bigger light to get a good view. To give you a sense of how much this matters, here's a photo of a boroscope that fits nicely inside a colonoscope instrument channel. And this photo shows the extremely tiny boroscope that we use to inspect ureteroscopes and other small scopes. If you want to inspect the entire length of the insertion tube, you should think about the length of the boroscope. A colonoscope is a lot longer than a cystoscope or ureteroscope, and you'll need a longer boroscope to be able to inspect the whole channel. Some manufacturers have boroscope systems with interchangeable components, 
so you can plug in different sizes of insertion tubes as needed for whatever you're inspecting. When inspecting endoscope exteriors, first, arrange the scope so that you can see the components you want to inspect and adjust your magnification system and lighting. Then start at one end of the scope and inspect each component as you move to the other end. Be sure to inspect your scope from various angles by moving the magnifying glass or gently moving the scope around. It's important to follow your institution's protocol for handling any visible defects. Hopefully, this will involve recleaning and reassessing the scope or sending it out for repair if there are visible defects. Make sure to document your findings in accordance with your institution's policies, and when you're done, clean off your equipment and wash your hands. Before you can start conducting boroscope exams, you need to set up the equipment, including the boroscope itself, the monitor, and software. First, connect everything and confirm that the light is working properly. Look for a light like a tiny little flashlight coming out the distal end of the boroscope. Then take a look at something really small, like a printed letter or number, to make sure everything is working properly. Once you've confirmed that it's working properly, you can arrange an endoscope for inspection. We recommend that you do this on a table or counter that's long enough to straighten the endoscope out entirely or only have one big curve, as that'll give you the best visualization of endoscope interiors. We recommend that you document the endoscope ID by taking a picture of the serial number before you take any other photos, so you don't get confused later about where a photo of a defect came from. Now you're ready to begin conducting an examination. You'll start by gently inserting the boroscope into a port or channel. To prevent damage, you should be very careful and move very slowly while advancing the boroscope. Moving slowly and watching continually will allow you to see defects, fluid, and debris that might get pushed out of the way or squashed flat if you move too quickly. Now watch carefully as the boroscope is slowly advanced through the channel and you'll notice droplets all along the wall of the channel. But then, watch what happens when the boroscope stops and is slowly withdrawn. You can't see the droplets anymore, and they're actually invisible when we start advancing the boroscope again until we get further inside the scope, because the boroscope actually squashed the droplets as it went by, and they spread out on the surface of the channel and on the boroscope. This is one reason why we recommend moving slowly and looking for problems during insertion rather than looking for problems when the boroscope is being drawn, like doctors do during colonoscopy. If you encounter an obstacle in the channel, slow down and gently rotate the boroscope so you can get a better view. If you encounter a badly dented channel, debris, or thick fluid, stop and take a photo before gently backing out of the scope. This will protect both the boroscope and the endoscope. We recommend that you take a photograph of any irregularities you find that might require action, although we recognize it's not necessary to take a photo of every single droplet or scratch or stain inside a scope. If there are a lot of issues, we generally recommend taking one photo of each type of defect for discussion with your team about fixing the problem and reducing risk. This video shows the kind of residue and debris our boroscopes have encountered inside fully processed endoscopes. As you can see, there are clumps of brown stuff all over the channel, and when we passed a swab through the channel, it came out looking like this, with lots of dark particles embedded in the swab. That means your boroscope might get exposed to soil and germs or anything else that's inside your scope. For that reason, we recommend that you develop strategies for reprocessing it to minimize risk of cross-contamination. We suggest that you start by reviewing your boroscope IFU and asking the manufacturer for any clarification you need. To minimize cross-contamination, the boroscope should be manually cleaned and disinfected every time you use it. And it's important to consider what you're going to do if your boroscope is damaged or exposed to pathogens. That way, you'll have a plan in place before something happens. And lastly, you should find a safe and secure place to store your boroscopes when they're not being used, so that they don't get damaged or stolen between uses. We recommend that you document your findings, and we developed a tracking sheet that you can download from our online webinar portal and customize. There's a link in the video description. And that brings us to the end of our discussion on visual inspection tools. Endoscope processing standards and guidelines require that flexible endoscopes be visually inspected with lighted magnification. 
lighted magnification and fluoroscopes allow you to see tiny defects that might not be visible with the naked eye. When performing visual inspection, it's important to select the right equipment for your situation, develop a system for documenting findings, and determine how your tools will be reprocessed and stored to maximize safety. Thanks for joining me today. If you want to learn more about the kinds of defects you might see in or on your endoscopes, you can check out our YouTube videos on endoscope defects or our one hour CE webinars on the website link in the video description. This webinar was made possible by an educational grant from Healthmark, who provided the magnification systems and boroscopes that we used for visual inspections. Please contact Healthmark directly for further information at www.hmark.com. For more information, visit our website or contact us by email at education at offsetinsights.com. Here's a list of disclaimers that you should review before making any changes to device processing or visual inspection practices at your facility.